And the reality is, Rabbutai Karim, that the war against Amalek is not just a war of fighting against heresy, idolatry, but it's also fighting against ignorance. Because when the sheep finally comes to learn the truth of Shema Yisrael, it's not enough for them to just want it. Because they'll have to also pass the test. The missionaries that are trying to convince them. And then after the missionaries, they have to go through the test of the Zionist atheists that are trying to convince them. These very same Zionists that for the last 80 years have been brainwashing the Jewish people with heresy and atheism. Everything they could possibly do to remove the Torah from the world they've done. Whether it's when this country was founded in 1948 or now, they're doing everything they possibly can. Arab Shvadron, Arab Shalom used to cry about it, yell about it. How the Zionists would force Jewish kids that were poor, that made Aliyah Teretz Israel eat non kosher food, commit immorality. They'd literally force their parents to send them to schools that were against the Torah, or else they would not give them money, they would not give them food. 80 years they've been brainwashing the Jewish people to go against the Shem, to go against his Mashiach. So the person that wants to come to Hashem and say Shema Yisrael, he has to also go through that. Because when he turns on the television, when he turns on any type of media, that's what he's going to hear. He's going to hear Christianity. He's going to hear atheism. He's going to hear All types of things that are against the Torah. And if that's not enough, even after he hears the atheism and he gets through it, he hears the Zionism, he gets through it. He hears the nasty things they have to say about the Torah, he gets through it. He gets one of these Jews for Yoshke approaching him in the middle of the street with a microphone asking him, what do you think of the moron that died for you? And took care of your sins. And he got through it by telling the guy, listen, can he take away my debt also? Perhaps he can take over the payments for my mortgage. He gets through it. He realizes it's all foolishness. He finally gets to the Bet Midrash. He finally gets to the Shi'u Torah. Then he has to deal with the Esav that looks like a Talmit Chacham. The Esav that looks like a Talmud Chacham, but he's telling you all types of heresy, all types of things that are against HaKadosh Baruch Hu, all types of things that humanize God, all types of things that minimize God, all types of things that make the Torah sound like a history book more than it does the instructions from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So what do you do? What do you do at such a time of hostility. What do you do at such a time of hostility? Now Rav Asimim told us, that's also in the Pasuk, follow the forefathers. That's the simple thing, follow the forefathers. Yes, they said learn Torah. But look at what we're dealing with. You're right. It looks impossible, right? It looks impossible. It looks impossible. I want to tell you something, Abutai. You know how we say God loves us. You know how we say that Akadosh Baruch Hu adores us. We're so beautiful. We're his favorite. We're his chosen. This is not a figure of speech. 
as great as Rav Ovadia Yosef was, that we cannot get to even his ankle, his wisdom and holiness. The genius of Rav Ovadia Yosef was incomprehensible. Anyone that reads just even literally a page in the Abiyah Omel, if they can't even understand the wisdom that's in it, already it was worth it to come to this world. Ravad Yosef would say, oh, we wish we could ever be like the Chida. The Chida. The Chida Kadosh. Who on him, Rabbi Elimelech of Lezhinsk famously said, there's a tzaddik in Italy named the Chida who through his wisdom is destroying all of the books of heresy there. If only Am Yisrael would learn his Torah, the Mashiach would come. 